everyone. This is now again your Professor Dr. Cabrera, and we will have our lecture for today. The DNA viruses that, incom that comprises your adenoviruses, your pox, herpes, and the hepatitis. Okay, and let's start. So, a viral structure uh, for a review, a virion or a viral particle will consist of a genome, which either can be either a DNA or RNA, packaged within a protein coat, a capsid, which may or may not be surrounded by a membrane envelope. There are essential enzymes or other proteins are carried within some of the viruses, DNA genomes. So some uh, DNA can be single-stranded or linear, examples of which are your parvoviruses. Uh, DNAs, DNA viruses can be double-stranded, right? Double-stranded linear genome, like your adenoviruses, herpes viruses, and your pox viruses. Uh, another type of your double-stranded DNA would be your circular genome, which includes your pol polyomal viruses and your hepatitis. So this is a very good uh, illustration comparing us to size of your viruses, of your human DNA and your human RNA. Uh, it is compared to the most common comparison would be your E. coli. See how big your E. coli it is. Uh, it is um, 6 micrometer in, the, uh, in, in length. When you call, compare it with your the smallest DNA virus will be your fibrovirus and your smallest uh, RNA virus will be your pre virus and in between will be your bacteriophage okay. and your uh, here, here on below would be your chlamydia one of the smallest uh, bacteria your chlamydia here as equal size with your the largest viruses will be your pox virus and your paramyxovirus okay so we now classify the dna viruses so dna viruses can be classified into a double stranded or a single stranded dna virus a double stranded dna virus it can be uh, either be enveloped or an envelope for the envelope Double-stranded DNA, these are your examples, your um, epidnoviruses, your herpes viruses, and your pox viruses. For your double-stranded unenveloped would be your adeno, your papilloma, and your polyoma. While your single-stranded DNA viruses, there's only one uh, 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 member would be your unenveloped single-stranded DNA viruses will be your parvovirus. Now let's talk about your DNA double-stranded envelope. Example would be your hepatoviruses, herpes viruses, and your pox viruses. Uh, hepatoviruses is the only human pathogen in this family is your hepatitis B virus, one of the most infectious viruses in the world. So your hepatitis B virion, is also called your DANE particle, is resistant to low pH or acid, moderate heat heat, and detergents. Your hepatitis B uh, virus antigens, and these are your examples, these are your antigens, your uh, HP core antigens, C, A, G, or your major core antigen, it surrounds your genome and core enzymes. Your hepatitis B surface antigen is present in the envelope, that's the antigen in the envelope. Your E antigen is shed to the blood and the presence of your HPEG is indicative of active disease, which is uh, also related to uh, your HB core. Okay, so the markers of the course in nature of hepatitis B uh, disease would be your serum. When you study your serum, you, if you have a HPEAG and your HBV DNA are the best indicators for the presence of infectious virions. And it correlates with transmissibility. Your anti-HBC meaning is an antibody, which is an uh, it's an immunoglobulin M to your 
hepatitis B core antigen is an indicator indicator of an acute infection. So if you have a blood sample that has an anti-HBC, means if the patient had an acute infection. All IgM antibodies converted to IgG to IgG after three months of six months of infection. So so that that's it. So if you can see uh, anti-HBC, then uh, you can have uh, as an as an IgM that would be a an acute infection. Okay. Your anti-HBS, which is an antibody to hepatitis B surface antigen, indicates the solution of the infection or prior vaccination. So, uh, the presence of your anti-HBS just means that you just you are just uh, the infection can be a, a self-resolve, or you just have your hepatitis B vaccination. And just really the presence of your anti-HBS is confers lifelong immunity. Your immunoglobulin anti-HBC distinguishes previous infection. So if your anti-HBC is positive, this is uh, previous infection, which is uh, distinguishes from vaccination. In vaccination, you have a uh, anti-HBA uh, anti-HBC antigen a negative so again uh, how do you distinguish a vaccination from a previous infection both vaccination and previous infection will have anti-hbs but the presence of your anti-hbc antigen anti-hbc antigen or core antigen will only be found among those individuals that had infection it is not found among individuals who had vaccination. The continued presence of your HB, uh, HBS or surface antigen and the presence of your anti-HBC and the lack of anti-HB AIG are your best indicators of chronic infection. So if you have chronic infection, you have uh, still the per uh, persistence of your surface antigen and you have your anti-HBC antigen and uh, we do not still are not able to produce your anti HBS AG okay so positive HBS AG negative anti HBS AG positive and anti HBC is a sign of chronic infection if your HBE antigen and your HPV DNA are negative so the patient is called a healthy carrier your patient is what called a healthy carrier. If HBAG and HBA positive, means that you have an infectious or infective carrier. If you have an HBE antigen and HPV DNA, your patient is an infectious. Okay. So this is the a good representation uh, that that this uh, compares the the uh, serologic events that are associated with both the acute and the chronic hepatitis B disease. So, so in the acute disease, so this is your acute disease, your hepatitis B antigen, okay, you have a anti-hepatitis B antigen, this one. Okay. Then later on, you'll be developing your anti-HBE antigen. Here, you have your anti-HBE B antigen. So, in this part of uh, of uh, of the curve, this is where there's heavy viral shedding. If you're on once, you have an increase of your HBE antigen, then it becomes your anti-HBC, your HPSAG goes down, and then later on you will be producing your anti-HPS, and here you will be producing HPC, and here you then producing your anti-HPE, okay, and your level of now goes down here, so 
takes around for almost one year for your liver enzymes to to stabilize. And in your okay, in chronic hepatitis, you have a persistent you have a persistent uh, uh, presence of your HPSAG. You have a persistent HBE antigen, your liver enzymes as a long time for it to uh, to stabilize see after five years before it plateaus on the baseline and here you can have your HBE and here you still have your anti HBC so see the inactive hepatitis can have an early uh, decrease in your liver enzymes and stability of it while in your chronic it's years and there is persistence of your HBSAG in your HBE antigen see so this is a, a good table that summarizes the serology of your hepatitis A and B viruses okay so the upper part would be here hepatitis A so the presence of the a hepatitis A IgM and equivocal or positive negative hepatitis A IgG means you can have your viral uh, acute viral hepatitis A if you have previous on your previous or you can usually will have your hepatitis A IgG now it's quite uh, more tedious with your hepatitis B okay your acute hepatitis B will have presence of your HBSAG presence of, of your HPE antigen or your HPV DNA can have a either positive negative of your anti core uh, or of your hepatitis B, which is an IgM. Neg still negative because it's IgG, it be longer. So negative anti HBC and negative anti HPS. So there are cases where in, uh, you can have a window. Window means uh, your hepatitis B disease occurs after infection is dissolved, but before anti HBS can be detected. That is your window. The only positive there will be anti HBC IgM. So you had your acute hepatitis, it's the period wherein you'll be uh, developing your antibodies. Okay? Your chronic hepatitis, which is a healthy carrier, and then HBS AG. Negative uh, HB antigen, HBV DNA, negative anti HBC IgM, but you can have an anti HBC IgG still because you're a carrier, you do not have an anti HBS antibodies. A chronic infective carrier, you can have both infective is for your HBE. The sign of uh, infective carrier, positive HPSAG, positive HPE, and on the positive anti HBC. Uh, previous uh, uh, history or history of hepatitis B infection, what can be only be positive now, it means they are not a carrier, just have a previous infection, you can have an anti HBC, IgG, and your anti HBS. For those who have been given vaccination, if the only positive would be your anti HPS. Okay, hopefully that is. So now let's proceed to your herpes viridae. So herpes viridae are enveloped icosahedral capsid in a linear double stranded DNA genome. An example of this would be herpes simplex virus or human virus. There uh, are two serotypes, your one and two. So initial infection and viral application occurs in your mucoepithelial cells, and they manifest as uh, they can cause light slices. They, they can have lytic infection. 
because the virus can have a virus induced cytopathic effect and inflammatory reaction. So they can have latent infection causing the detectable damage. They usually are located not in the sense of the ganglia. So latent infection, they can be of prolonged infection. They can also be neurotrophic. So neurotrophic means they have predisposition to attach themselves or they have a liking to the nerves. So they are. So they infect the end nerves on the side of any cell lesions. And they can have, because they have latent infection, they can have your reactivation of your latent uh, herpes simplex virus, maybe induced by emotional or physical stress, certain foods or immune suppression. After reactivation, the virus will travel to peripheral tissue and replicate causing recurrence of lesions again. So your reactivation can, you can have like So this is a good table that um, differentiates the two, the herpes viridase. You can have your alpha subfamily, your gamma subfamily, and your beta subfamily. So for your alpha subfamily, you can have your herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, and your body is a sister. So, so they are herpes viridae. In the alpha subfamily, the gamma subfamily will be Epstein by virus. Then your uh, human herpes virus 8, your beta subfamily, you have your cytomegalovirus and human herpes virus 6. Okay, so so you have three subfamilies. So let's talk about your first subfamily, your alpha subfamily. Let's talk about your herpes virus the sister. So the disease for herpes virus simplex 1 will be oral herpes it can cause because this is usually uh, a herpes uh, infection above the navel okay so they can cause oral herpes encephalitis keratoconjunctivitis. conjunctivitis okay but also with keratoconjunctivitis, conjunctivitis they can also be a uh, caused by your herpes simplex 2 if they will uh, if ever, it most of the time would be a uh, neonatal herpes simplex. So the major site of latency will be in the sensory ganglia. Common mode of transmission will be direct contact with the lesion. So as with your herpes simplex 2, so these are the below the navel. So this can cause genital herpes, neonatal herpes, meningitis. But of course, uh, this these uh, diseases can also be caused by herpes simplex 1 but it just means that if you have herpes simplex 1 you can have the diseases about the navel most common cause but it can also be caused by herpes simplex 2 but herpes simplex 2 will be causing infections or diseases below the navel so you can have your genital herpes, genital herpes, meningitis okay so again the same your latent site of latency would be sensory ganglia and direct contact while your varicella zoster causes your chicken pox, which will be your primary infection. So it's called your varicella zoster. Then your zoster, which is your single shingles, is a recurrent infection of your varicella zoster virus. So again, same uh, major site, so sensory ganglia. And these are transferred via aerosols. Now let's go to your gamma subfamily, your Epstein virus. Uh, virus okay, causes your infectious mononucleosis, your oral uh, leukoplakia in AIDS, AIDS, your Burkitt's lymphoma, and your nasopharyngeal lymphoma. So, this one is a nasty virus. Okay, you know, among the uh, herpes viridae family, uh, the major site of latency will be on the B cells. So, mode of transmission is TC. Your uh, human herpes simplex 8 is uh, causes Kaposi sarcoma among AIDS. Okay, we do not major set of latency is not known, and there are mode of transmission will be through the saliva. For the beta sub family, you have two: your cytomegalovirus and your uh, human herpes uh, virus six. 
So you said megalovirus causes, for example, disease, hepatitis, pneumonia, retinitis, and the immunocompromise. Uh, can have your heterophyll negative monoclosis. So, site of major latency will be on monocytes and lymphocytes. They are transmitted through your body fluids, transplacental, or in transplants. While your human herpes virus 6 causes your one, and it's just plus a uh, benign, this is your rasciola, okay? Uh, or otherwise called your exanthin subutum. So, your rasciola is a is a herpes viridae, it's your human herpes virus 6. It major size of latency will be your PMD cells and they are transferred through aerosols. Okay. So your so herpes simplex one is just a, a reiteration, it's a generally above the waist, herpes labialis, fever distance cold source, injuries of stomitis and temporal lobe encephalitis. Or your herpes simplex virus 2, okay, below the waist, generally, herpes mental, herpes disseminated meningitis, so this one. So that's, this picture is an example of your uh, herpes labialis, okay, or cold source. So your herpes simplex infection can be detected in to a, a, a smear, your junk test or your pap smear by the presence of Sensito Caudry type A nuclear inclusion virus. So the treatment for your herpes viridae would be a cyclovir, pencyclovir, ramcyclovir, and valicyclovir. These are usually are common drugs for your anti herpes simplex virus. Drugs. So your herpes simplex virus, and you can have your your lesions like this in the this is the genital herpes. So now let's proceed to your pox video. This is your this is instead of DNA double stranded. It has a large complex big shape virus okay, with a linear double stranded DNA genome. Unlike other DNA viruses, the pox virus is replicating the cytoplasm. Example of this will be your variola virus. Say uh, human virus causing small toxins is now eradicate your animal tox viruses, toxinia, or or monkeypox may cause diseases in human. This is your monkeypox. Does it make you like look like a monkey? Okay, your molluscum contagiosum. Okay, so it's a part of your pox baby, your molluscum contagiosum virus. It's a self limiting viral infection. But among their their family, it is uh, it is with the family that causes severe infections. So this is your this is an un umbilicated uh, perdu white uh, lesions with central umbilication. So that is your most compatibility. So these are small raised umbilical lesions in the trunk, temples, and proximal extremities. Lesions occur singly or in groups and have a central granular plug containing the virions, or otherwise called the molluscum bodies. So infection is usually benign, it is self-limited, it is transmitted by cross contacts or formats. Okay? All populations are susceptible and may be disseminated if you have a, a immune deficiency. So now let's talk about your double stunted DNA and angle of viruses. One that causes your skull will be your adenovirus, your papillomavirus, and polyam. So again, we are now here. We are now here. DNA, double stranded and envelope. R3, your APP, adeno, papilloma, and polyam. Poly so your adeno is a mid-sized virus with a linear double-stranded DNA and it's naked icosahedral capsid that has fiber extending from the vertical. It has a lytic infection with ample inflammations occurring in the mucous membranes of the respiratory tract. It has tested and conjunctive and cornea, so it causes uh, uh, persistent head infection, causes irritating food tissues like tonsil, adenosine and fresh touches. Okay? So, in cases of adenovirus, the virion can occur, 
what are your adenovirus illnesses, okay? So your incubation period would be 4 to 9 days, but regions may be released long periods even after the resolution of the symptoms. So it causes acute self-limited illness, okay? Uh, crush primarily in children, military recruits, and in um, These are your adenoviral illnesses. You can have your acute febrile pharyngitis, acute respiratory disease, uh, pharyngeal fever, your atypical pneumonia, okay? epidemic rate conjunctivitis, or what we call the sore eyes. Gastroenteritis, and of course, because it was in the pairs patches, you can have your acute appendicitis. See, uh, lymphoid hyperplasia and the comprises blood supply. So sometimes, that's why sometimes appendicitis are always uh, preceded by a uh, infection, either respiratory infection or diarrhea. So how are they transmitted? They are. Uh, your adenovirus are resistant to drying and detergents and very contagious. Regions are spread via aerosols, via fecal oral food, or mites cause contact in aggregated chlorinated swimming pools. So, how do we prevent and treat? Live oral vaccines have been developed for military recruits against your adenovirus types 4 to 7. Usually, supportive care is uh, given to treat adenoviral infections unless you have appendicitis, then you do your appendectomy. So, no drug therapy, so it's just supportive. Now, let's go to one that has a very good vaccine now, your human papillomavirus or your HPVs. So, this can have your, see, your wart, genital warts. So, your HPV infects and replicates mechanisms in mucosal epithelial tissue associated with cervical okay, carcinoma. Especially those serotypes, hepatitis B 16, 18, 31, and 33. So, hepatitis uh, hemapapilloma virus is spread by direct contact with skin warts through sexual contact with the anogenital lesions and from infected mother to infant during birth. Symptomatic shedding from most uh, spread via fomites. Uh, treatment and prevention so, with warts, you just have to authorize and surgical removal, injection, and for an alpha. But recurrences. How about laryngeal papilloma? So you can have surgical removal or you can use your hemodysidofovir. And now, unfortunately, we have vaccines. Uh, this are comprises your capsid-protein form into virus like particles of your HPV 16, 18, 6, 11, or HPV 16, 18 to block your HPV infection, papillomas, and prevent cervical carcinoma. So, these are usually offered before sexual activity to young women aged 11 to 26 years old. So, this is a severe type of genital herpes. Now, it previously slide because the vaginal herpes disease now is your penal herpes. Now, now, the third group would be your polymer virus. You can have your BK and your JC virus, who are the only human pathogens in this group. They cause your JC, okay? Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or your PML, that results from reactivation of your JC virus, followed by virinia and spread to the central nervous system. So, it manifests as impairment of speech, sight coordination, and mental abilities, leading to paralysis and even death. So, on histology, the brain tissue shows abnormal oligodendrocytes near the areas of the brain. Okay, again, now let's proceed to the other arm. Would be your single stranded unenveloped parvovirus. Uh, unenveloped would be your parvo. Uh, parvo. See, parvovirus is a, it's an infection. Okay. That causes. An infection that may look like severe, but your patient is quite comfortable. So your parboviridae, it is cause your parvovirus B19. This is your parvovirus B19. Okay, so it causes your erythema infectiosum or infectious. So in 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 the herpes, each human herpes virus six, 
will be your rosciola. But this one is your erythema infectiosum or 5th disease. So by face this is in children age 4 to 15 years. So this is a common in, in infant. But in children 4 to 15 years, your erythema infectiosum or 5th disease caused by your parvovirus B19. While your rosciola is common among infants. It causes a non-specific uh, flu-like symptoms and decrease in hemoglobin levels. Uh, it's an immune-mediated phase, uh, phase. In two to three weeks, uh, your immune-mediated phase that occurs two to three weeks later is characterized by rash and a crowd. So this is one that you call your slap cheek. See, and this is very cute with the reddish spots. It's like it's slap cheek appearance on the face, especially the arms and legs. Last one to two weeks, so it's not it's, uh, quite a long uh, infection, as long as two weeks. So erythema infectiosum or your fifth disease caused by your parvovirus B19. Okay. So now in older children, so they look like slap. Okay. So they can now in adult they can present as polyarthritis. predominantly affect the knees, hands, knees, and ankles. Okay. Unfortunately, in the older population, you can have a plastic crisis due to your B19 infection in those, especially those uh, suffering from sickle cell disease or other chronic hemolytic anemias. They can have a transient reticulocytopenia of around 7 to 10 days that leads to decrease uh, reticulocytopenia of so these are your reticulocytes. Okay. Uh, decrease in your hemoglobin levels. Symptoms of your uh, uh, drift disease is fever, malay, itching, chills, possibly arthralgia, and a macro-popular lungs and joint swelling. Fetal infection results in stubborn so in, 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 in utero causes hydrops fetalis, okay? but nothing, but no congestion. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for for listening and watching. And then uh, see you next in your study. So again, it's your professor, Dr. Cabrera. Okay. And thank you for watching my channel. Okay. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up and please share my this lecture uh, to your classmates or to other people who wants to learn uh, at least a simple uh, lecture on DNA viruses. Thank you.